Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tech TLDR. And today's SpaceX news update. I don't have a lot of info for you guys. I didn't make an episode yesterday because there really wasn't much going on. I have some more stuff coming out today, though, that I want to talk about. We'll get into that. The SN10, the SN11. We're also going to talk about SpaceX's recent Falcon 9 launch, as well as Axiom Space's investments. They just closed a company I want to look more into into the future. So if you want to know all about that, stick through the whole episode. And if you want to help me out, be sure to click the like button. It helps me out tremendously more than you know. Let's get into why you clicked on the video. So the SN10 right here, we have a photo. It hasn't launched, hasn't done any static fires. There's been no road closures recently. That is because of the weather in the area. They've been experiencing freezing temperatures. They haven't been able to do anything regarding any sort of testing like that whatsoever. If we look at the weather coming up, though, it's going to be much warmer in the 50s and the 60s. I would imagine this should be enough for them to do testing. Like I said before, though, there's been no closures, no road closures, anything like that for the locals in the area. So don't get your hopes up too much about any testing going on. I'd say at the earliest at this point, we're going to have to wait until later on this week, if not next week, to see at least a static fire test. If you see anything about a launch coming up, I've seen all these things saying there's a launch happening like today or tomorrow, things like that. Don't believe it. There's, n there's nothing going on right now. They're playing with Mother Nature. Mother Nature doesn't care what kind of permit you pull. It doesn't care what the FAA says. It doesn't care how good you think you can land this thing, how well it's engineered. Mother Nature, she's on her own time. She doesn't care about this. And right now, it's her time of the month. So be patient with her. The SN11. I made a mistake in one of my previous episodes. I said the SN11 was completed. It is not my mistake. I'll be honest, I screwed up on that one. The SN11 had not had its flaps installed. Coming from Mary on Twitter, it is now having the flaps installed. They're almost done with that. My mistake on that part, completely forgot about. They had to install the things that, you know, control aerodynamically. I don't know how I forgot about that, but nonetheless, they are working on that, and there's much more activity going on in the SpaceX area, even though it is cold out, the landing pad, there's other construction going on, like stuff like that, so it's not a dead zone down there right now, there is activity, they're just not doing the SN10, and it works as long as something is getting done in that area, they are progressing is the way I see it, just because it's on a Starship launching, there is progress, there's always going to be progress. But unfortunately, SpaceX, they, they took a step back. So as of, depending on where you live, last night or this morning, whatever you want to call it, 12.05 a.m. in my area is when 60 Starlinks detached from the Falcon. So that means that earlier last night is when the actual Falcon 9 launched from the Florida area. Now, if you do not know this, the booster, this would have been the 25th consecutive landing that SpaceX has done with a booster. And then unfortunately, they missed the, the landing. That's right, the booster of the Falcon 9, it did not stick the landing. And there's multiple memes going around about why that didn't happen. One of them, the most popular one, is that this photo right here. There were three seagulls on the drone ship where the booster would have landed. And SpaceX felt bad they didn't want to roast them, so they crashed it out in the ocean. Whether or not that's true, SpaceX has yet to confirm it. I'm sure they love animals and they didn't want to hurt these three little seagulls. I saw another rumor, again, not confirmed by SpaceX, saying that they apparently uploaded the SN10's land code to the booster itself. They switched the software, apparently. I wouldn't believe that either. It's probably just a hiccup in the system. They've launched and landed these things multiple times. Eventually, they're going to break. Something will go wrong. The fact that they've been able to launch and land a booster more than once is a miracle in itself. So 24 is still the record that SpaceX needs to beat. Hopefully, we see that number come with Starships. 24 Starships landing in a row, and that's going to be a good day. Last story I want to talk about with you guys is about Axiom Space. This is coming from Spacenews.com. Axiom Space, I've talked about in the past, they're looking to be the first commercial space station. Their plan is to launch multiple of similar ISS modules connected to the ISS. And once the ISS becomes defunct, because their funding is actually going to be running out before to, uh, 2030, depending on if the government extends it or not. If Axiom Space can get up there, I'm sure the government will just go to them. Sort of how NASA went with SpaceX to launch. I would imagine it's going to be the same thing. They'll just have Axiom be the ISS. But anyway, it'll connect to the ISS and slowly grow off of it. Eventually it may detach. They haven't stated if they will or not, or if they will just keep the ISS permanently. They're still deciding things like that. This isn't going to happen until 2024, they said, roughly is when they 
plan on getting their first pieces of equipment to permanently become a part of space. Uh, they recently raised $130 million. They're looking to double their staff. They're at about 100 right now. They're trying to get to 200 They need to raise, they said, roughly $1 to $3 billion in order to actually get this going. They said out a uh, they said at a funding of $1 billion will be enough to get them going to the point where they can begin collecting revenue from other sources uh, within their company and then use that money to finish out the project. While this was their first big investment round, they plan on doing another, and they haven't decided yet whether or not they're going to do private investors like they did this time or if they're going to go public on the stock market through what's called a SPAC. If you don't know what a SPAC is, I'll expl- I've explained it a few times. Uh, essentially, Two companies merge, Axion would merge with a company that's already on the stock market, and that company that's already on the stock market would be, it's essentially an investment firm, and that would become Axion Space on the stock market. It's a very simple way of getting onto the stock market. This would raise the money that they would need to do that. Whether or not they want to go public, they still have to decide. When you go public, you have more loops that you have to jump through. And a big thing they talked about, which I've been thinking about myself, And I'm glad that they've confirmed this as well. People who are multi-millionaires that have a much better understanding of the space sector than I do, I'm sure. They talked about how within 15 years from now, their goal is to be within the manufacturing in space sector. Sector that doesn't really exist yet. And they're predicting that's going to be probably the biggest sector to exist. Think about it like this. The reason why space is so difficult for us, one, is launching into space, and two, you have to bring a lot of stuff with you. SpaceX, Blue Origin, those companies, Rocket Labs, they're fixing the problem of getting stuff to space at an affordable price. That's their goal. Once we get stuff there, they still have to bring a lot of stuff. Wouldn't it be better to just make stuff up there? That's what Axiom Space is getting to. They want to be the company that you can build and have stations up in space on this you know commercial iss you can manufacture i'm sure through 3d printing technology the different components you would need and continue to build that way instead of having to keep launching stuff in the space you can build it right there the problem would just be getting the material the raw material itself like i said i would assume they haven't stated i would assume they're going to be 3d printing i don't think you're going to be using lumber to build things out in space it just doesn't make sense but 3d printing it's an amazing technology it's getting better by the day. Within 15 years from now, yeah, I can imagine you would build a lot with a 3D printer. Exciting stuff. If they are going on the stock market, maybe a good investment. I'm not a stock picker, but it's definitely something to look into. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys in this episode. If you like this stuff, if you want more, be sure to drop a comment, drop a like, and subscribe to the channel. If you don't like it, you can always leave. Either way, be sure to have a good one.